Good evening and uh, welcome to the annual general meeting of the BMW Club uh, Motorcycle Club of Ottawa. My name is Fiona Brown and I'm just completing the second year as club president. Uh, this evening we have five items on our agenda. We are going to take a quick run through the highlights of 2020. We'll look at the financial position of the club and report that to you. We have uh, an opportunity for questions. If you would like to submit a question, the uh, email address to do that, please, is agm2020 at bmwmcottawa.ca. agm2020 at bmwmcottawa.ca for your questions. Then, uh, after questions and answers, we will have the election of officers uh, for 2021, and that will be conducted by our secretary, Denise Charlebois. And then there will be just very brief uh, closing remarks. So let's, uh, let's get right in and start with the, the highlights of 2020. And surprisingly, there are quite a few, even though it has been the most unusual year in, in club history. Uh, membership uh, remains at $25 uh, per person for 12 months. And that actually has been our membership fee for as far back as any of the members uh, we still have can actually remember, which is interesting. We have a 93% renewal of members this year, which again is astonishing, um, all things considered. And at the mo this moment, we've got 248 uh, members in our club, 46 of whom have joined the club in 2020. Uh, back in February, we already had 18 new members this year, and we had a very successful orientation evening for those members, many of whom we've seen at plenty of events over the summer, and so that is a, a process that we like to include in future years. I'd just like to say thank you to Mark Hill, our membership director. Mark's done an absolutely stellar job again this year uh, in every way, and I'm sure any of you that have had a question or a concern of any kind have found Mark uh, tremendously responsive and uh, resolved any issues and assisted you in every way. So thank you very much, Mark, for, for all of that work. Looking at the social events, this is the area of uh, club activity that has, of course, been severely curtailed by the, the year that we're currently living through. The potluck dinner, of course, uh, preceded everything uh, changing on March the 2nd and thank you very much to JD Cripeau, our Vice President and the group of volunteers that pulled together an excellent potluck uh, dinner on March the 2nd. Over 50 members attended that and it was at the time considered to be an excellent kickoff to the, to the season. The other social events that are a big part of our calendar are, of course, our club meetings, our dinner meetings at KS on the Keys. And whilst we're not able to uh, undertake those right now, Chris White is uh, maintaining that relationship with the restaurant. And we certainly hope to be able to return there uh, optimistically in 2021. But uh, we'll be back when we can with those uh, dinner meetings. Rider education uh, in this past year, uh, we had hoped to, to uh, get, get started with uh, a good program of, of workshops. We were able to conduct one, and that was uh, the advanced GPS course uh, held. Omar Kakwani uh, was one of our club members who presented uh, amazing material at that course and, and helped us all. There were, again, 18 members that uh, went out to, to that. Uh, Chris White organised it and uh, Mark Hill presented a, a fabulous uh, venue at no cost to the club, which if, uh, if the gods are with us, we'll be able to use again in the future. There were a number of things that unfortunately we did have to cancel this past year, but I would like to, to at least mention them to you because a lot of work went in to them by uh, a lot of uh, volunteers and many of them are now uh, plans and materials that we have on hand for the future. So certainly we will take advantage of them um, at some point. The art school uh, was cancelled in 2020, that is the Advanced Rider Training School, uh, our one day late May course at uh, Calabogie. Uh, at the track there for cornering skills development and I'd just like to say thank you to our head coach Jeff Miller, our chief administrator Francois Malo and the paddock boss uh, Mark Thompson who had already put a, a lot of work into, uh, into art and uh, you'll hear a little bit more about that as, the, as we go through the agenda tonight. And the other things that we had online for you last year 
were, were going to be our first aid CPR course, which Francois Malo had organized uh, partly for ride leaders, but also for a number of club members that had expressed an interest in that opportunity. And also I'd like to thank uh, Francois because of the uh, refresher riding course that he had arranged with the Ottawa Safety Council. That unfortunately didn't take place, but plans are afoot for a future event. There was one training opportunity that came to pass uh, in September. That was a, a new initiative. And I'd like to thank Chris Barnett and Tick uh, for arranging the GS Adventure training course, uh, the SMART course with Clinton Smout in the, in the Barry area. And six club members attended that course, uh, braver than I, I will say. And a uh, bit, bit of a, a challenging uh, weekend, I'm told. But uh, it was an excellent course and uh, the, there was a, a better rate than uh, the normal daily rate for that was arranged uh, because it was through the club. So we appreciated that. Thank you, Chris and Tick. One thing that really uh, came to mind this year was uh, we had set out to do a little bit more on our charitable support uh, effort. And this would have been the 20th year that the club had volunteered uh, with the Ride for Dad, uh, right back from its inception to this 20th anniversary year. And we also this year wanted to do a little bit more for a second co uh, cause, and that was for ovarian cancer research. And despite everything that affected us this year, it was a phenomenal response to both of those causes, with the result that members contributed over $5,575 in total. Uh, in May, for ovarian cancer research, $3,075 was raised, and then between June and October, uh, the Ride for Dad, which was a, a, a abbreviated version, the Ride Alone Together this year, uh, members of the club sponsored our representative J.D. Crapeau to the tune of $2,500. So on behalf of both of those organisations that have benefited from, from your kindness and generosity, thank you very much indeed. And thank you to everyone in the club who volunteered to help uh, raise awareness and bring attention to those two uh, causes. We appreciated it very much. The, on to the, the main business of, of why we are who we are as, as the uh, BMW Motorcycle Club of Ottawa. The Impromptu Rides uh, Forum was uh, an excellent uh, way in which our season got off to a reasonable start, even though we had to delay the, the original start of uh, a lot of the club rides. But uh, it started buzzing with people making their own plans. And interestingly enough, I see it still buzzing today as we all look forward to what seems almost unbelievable, but four or five days of warm, sunny weather that, weather that we're about to enjoy. So the, that was the, the start of things moving through our, our website. The ride captain role in our club, which is absolutely pivotal, as, as you know, that is the role that, uh, that basically organizes the, the group of ride leaders that uh, recruits, trains uh, ride leaders and uh, motivates us all to do uh, a good job. And uh, that transitioned from Francois Malo. So thank you, Francois, for several years as our ride captain. And the role was taken over by Jeff Miller. And uh, he built upon Francois's wonderful foundation of rides and routes. I think this year, because we couldn't travel very far afield as we normally might, so much extra effort went into finding uh, really interesting roads that many of us uh, had never even imagined were out there within eastern Ontario and western Quebec. But it made for a, a superb season despite all of, uh, all of the changes. We had six road rides and over a hundred members participated in at least one or more of, <clears throat> excuse me, of those rides. We also had three new ride leaders join the team and I'd just like to say thank you to, the, to those three, Richard Chalette, Brian Butler and JP Lachance. And uh, they certainly participated in a lot of the, the ride activity and of course uh, a continuing thank you to the ride leaders that returned this year. Off-road on the GS program, we had three official rides and that was an expansion of the program that was really initiated in 2019. And over 40 members of the club participated in one or more of those rides. Uh, a special shout out to Tony Fanicotta and to JP Crapeau, 
who led all three of those uh, organized rides. But additionally, they, I think, led a number of impromptu rides on the trails as well uh, throughout the season. So thank you uh, both. And we're happy that so many members uh, enjoyed uh, that experience. The one area of actual riding type event that really didn't do so well this year was our uh, cafe clubs. And honestly, if we are going to run with those again next year, I would recommend that there needs to be a significant review, refresh, uh, some new thoughts on, on how we can innovate everyone with that. We had three cafe club events, one of which was successful as a launch to the Ride for Dad. Uh, the other two were a little bit ho-hum. And uh, I think I could do more and I hope uh, if anyone would like to volunteer, or uh, their time or their ideas or suggestions about that program, we'd love to hear them. The one area that was a new and exciting addition to our ride, riding activity this season, uh, and we have to thank Peter Sanderson for that idea, and it was the introduction of the Peter Cottontail Fun Run uh, in September. I'm sorry, I, I missed it, it was out of town that weekend, but uh, we had a good turnout, uh, a, a sort of casual, almost orienteering type of experience uh, leading to a, a trip to a, a berry farm and refreshments and, and tour. And it was quite different to what we normally do as a club ride, but it did demonstrate that there was an enthusiasm and a group of members that were looking for something a little bit different. So any further ideas along that line, we'd certainly like to hear them. Planning in reserve, and what I mean by that is just wanted to pay homage to some of the activities that we couldn't ultimately deliver, but just to recognize the work and effort that did go in. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Michel Dozois for the work he did to arrange our trip to Europe. We will go one day, um, but there were seven of us that were lined up to, uh, to go to Spain of all places in June, and naturally that uh, could not occur. The biggest event that we actually had to forego, and, and quite disappointingly so, was the White Mountain getaway, the Victoria Day weekend, four days in New Hampshire. And I'd like to thank Wendy and Rabbi Abdallah, who had done all of the planning and logistics for that. We only had the event, I think, uh, on five days it was on the website, when we obviously when we thought it could go, and we had 31 members register right away. So that was completely booked up. Uh, that, for sure, will come back uh, in the future. A thank you to Denise, who, uh, Denise Charlebois, who had done a lot of uh, preparatory work around the uh, MOA rally, and we had expected to go out on our Wild West tour to Idaho, Montana and Wyoming, and uh, the, if you follow the MOA, the BMW Members of America site, you'll know that they are hoping to have that event uh, in Great Falls, Montana in 2021. So again, the, we may be able to pull, the, pull those plans out of mothballs and, and, uh, and actually enjoy that event. The, uh, there was going to be a five-day tour in Gaspé, and Francois Malo had done all of the planning and logistics for it, so that is something that we hold ready for uh, for next year or as soon as possible. And finally, a thank you to Graham Collins, who had stepped in to, to look after the Halliburton Highlands ride. That had a really fabulous name. It's a Thunder Alley or Cannonball Run or something along those lines. It sounded very sprightly anyway, um, but that sounded like good fun. So hopefully that one will come back uh, in 2021. So moving on briefly to marketing and uh, communications. And uh, this is where we owe a debt to Jeff Miller, our webmaster, and uh, for his management of the website. It is, has proven an invaluable asset, uh, especially this year, even more than we had ever imagined, to be our virtual clubhouse, really, where we can all keep in contact with one another and um, things such as registering for events. And, and by the way, shout out to all of you that uh, nobody complained, everybody registered. If you found you couldn't come to an event, you deregistered. Uh, all of that activity was facilitated through the website, but it was only successful because everybody actually followed, followed along, and uh, we appreciate that very much. The club merchandise, club merch, it used to be called regalia, but we, we learned in the course of uh, sort of re, 
re-energizing it that merchandise or merch is the new trendy term so we're going with that and thank you to Amy Finney because Amy did all the, the legwork to uh, find the right kind of supplier and uh, and provide that opportunity for us and also now to Wendy Abdullah who has taken up the the reins as the coordinator of the program uh, as you'll see on on the website we have about 10 items uh, some shirts jacket uh, backpack, baseball cap, uh, sort of the basic lineup at the moment. But if you've got ideas of things you'd like to see, then Wendy would certainly like to, to hear from you. Or any comments about the quality of items. So anyway, with the holiday season coming up, uh, I encourage you, I uh, encourage myself, I obviously haven't been there yet, uh, to um, perhaps treat yourself to something special. Club meetings, and uh, well, that one we'll see after tonight, whether we manage to pull this, this meeting off. Uh, we are considering the possibility of being able to have some uh, presentation style meetings uh, with some interesting topics that will be virtual in the next few months until we have the opportunity to, to return to our normal practices, which we hope will occur. Moving forward on to our administration, and this is a blessedly short section, you'll be pleased to hear, but uh, I wanted to speak a moment about BMW Clubs Canada uh, for two reasons. We are an affiliate of that group, and we benefit in two really amazing ways. Uh, first and foremost, it costs $50, $50 for our entire club to be affiliated with BMW Clubs Canada, for which uh, the discount program offered through that uh, organization uh, on the purchase price of new motorcycles, new BMW motorcycles, uh, is something that I hope many more people can take advantage of uh, in, the, in the coming year. I think we've got about seven club members this year that have received mostly between $750 and $1,000 discount from the cost of a motorcycle um, through that program. And the only qualifying uh, fact is that you need to have been with our club as a member for 12 months. And if you are interested in investigating that, look on our website uh, under the club drop down menu, member services, and there is a page about member benefits. And in that page, you will find the links to the BMW Canada discount program. So if you're looking for a new bike, there's a, a nice way to save a significant amount of pre-tax dollars. The second thing that we receive through BMW Clubs Canada affiliation is our insurance as a club. And that amounts to uh, event insurance and also to directors and officers uh, liability insurance. And we, we had a moment this year where we thought we might have to get those for ourselves. And that would have cost us around $5,000. Thank you to, to our Vice President J.D. Crepeau and to Tony Street, our Treasurer, who investigated what that might have to look like. But thankfully I can tell you that uh, the little bit of a glitch that we saw in that program is resolved and we have every confidence that uh, that insurance remains available to us in, in the coming year and hopefully into the future. Uh, another area on administration, and please don't go away screaming, but uh, bylaws. You'll be grateful to know that Mark Hill is, uh, t has taken uh, the responsibility to do some revisions to our bylaws. They're, that is necessary. Again, they're on the website if you feel you'd like to read them. But uh, because we've changed uh, the way that we do business over the last few years, there's been several slight changes. And just one example might be how we now have the rolling membership, for, for instance, um, that now that we have that. Um, the, how the bylaws talk about membership and when it's renewable is no longer current. So it's things of that nature primarily that we're just bringing up to date as to how business is actually done. If there are any significant um, changes to the bylaws in terms of how our club operates, those naturally are uh, brought before the membership uh, for a specific vote. So no fear, all we're doing is uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's at the moment. But thank you, Mark, for taking that on. The board of directors this year, I would like to just uh, thank my fellow board members particularly. It was an interesting year. Um, and I'll, there'll be more in terms of the finances, how we talk about it and, and reveal some of the ups and downs of the year that aren't maybe evident from the, uh, from the outside. 
But the big thing was, do we ride or do we not ride? And that was something that we, uh, the board, uh, looked at over a period. We tried to follow all the direction of the public health. And at the same time, we knew that the members were, were eagerly keen to, to ride and to participate in a sport that is essentially no more, no more dangerous um, in this current pandemic than it was before. So I would like to say to the board, who really looked out for, it, for everyone uh, and kept the show on the road in 2020 uh, in a balanced way, thank you very much. And the people that participated at uh, a part or all of the year are as follows. Andrew Beatty, Denise Charlebois, J.D. Crapeau, Mark Hill, Francois Malo, Jeff Miller, Larry Nesbitt, Amy Finney, Tony Street, and Chris White. So thank you very much uh, to all of those club members for um, a tremendous contribution throughout the year. Going to move on to the, uh, the finances to review those with you. And the reason that I'm doing that and not our treasurer is simply to uh, maintain as, as little contact in this environment. We didn't feel quite brave enough tonight to try a multi-venue remote. So that's something we're going to build up to, maybe. We'll see. Um, yeah, I've got our producer just looked around and gave, gave me the death stare that right there, but uh, more of that later. So for tonight, uh, I'm afraid you're stuck with me for a little bit longer. Now, the, we're not going, you'll be pleased to know, I hope, that we're not going line by line through the income statement nor the balance sheet, both of which uh, you have available. If you've gotten this far and, and you're watching this presentation, uh, the links to both of those documents were, were right there and I'm going to assume that you uh, have seen whatever you feel you need to. So I'm going to put the, a bit of the flesh around the bones of the numbers for you, uh, hopefully make a little bit more, more sense uh, to people like myself that are not necessarily the number crunchers. First and foremost, special situation, I want to draw your attention to that because it um, You'll notice on the receipts and again on the expenses, the biggest number that jumps out at you is $3,075. Now, I know for a lot of you, you work with big budgets and usually there's a ex, you know, disclaimer that says that these numbers are all in thousands. Well, they're not tonight, these are the, these are the numbers. But anyway, $3,075 uh, was all of the donations received for the uh, ovarian cancer re research project. And uh, the reason you don't see the Ride for Dad monies was that because Ride for Dad's so established, all of those revenues flew, uh, were donated direct through the Ride for Dad website. And, uh, and so the, the only one you see on our balance sheet is the, uh, the ovarian cancer one. And subsequently, a check was cut uh, for that full amount and handed on to Ovarian Cancer Canada. And they, in turn, will provide charitable receipts to all of our donors. So that aside, what I want to focus on with you just now is to look at, uh, at our, what I'd call our real club money. And really, um, the good news is we started 2020 with uh, reserves, it's kind of astonishing actually, $13,000 uh, plus, plus a handful uh, of uh, funds in reserve at the beginning of the year. Now, before everybody gets too excited, those are accumulated over many, many years. Uh, haven't made, I haven't made much of an addition in my two years as president. Uh, we haven't been continuing to increase them. All the credit for those goes back to predecessors uh, of prior years. However, it is a big chunk of money and, and we're very aware that it's, it's more money than we, we need to have on hand. So when we started 2020, it was a year of investment. When the board sat down a year ago, we really were planning on a few things. We wanted to enhance member services this year and offer a bigger variety of, of activities. We'd kind of been polling the year before. What did people feel they would like? What, you know, what was of interest? So we wanted to do more. And also, um, we wanted to future-proof the club. And what do I mean by that? Well, one of the things is, and if you look at the numbers again, you'll see one of the biggest expenses is, in fact, the software as a service, the, the way that we pay for our uh, website, which is also a, a member management system. And by future-proofing the club, we wanted to have all of that um, modern communication methodology and management 
uh, f uh, functionality so that it could be easily managed by volunteers going forward. With 250 members that deserve uh, to, p to know exactly what's happening and, and to be able to contribute and participate in as many activities, we felt that was a really important investment. And as I say, I've said already tonight, and we all know over the course of the year, um, a lot of our website communications piece has proved even more valuable than we would have imagined. So all of that said, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we went into the year with, uh, we had planned for a, a deficit budget of $3,700. We were trying to actually pull down a little bit of those reserves and uh, test the waters and see if the things we thought you would like actually proved popular. Um, unfortunately, we failed. Uh, we failed uh, because we simply, the, the world around us changed. We couldn't $5,700 in expense for the year and the receipts that we, we receive come in from, from three sources. 89% of our revenue uh, comes in from our membership fees of $25 per member uh, for the year and those were higher than anticipated this year. We had introduced the rolling membership we also, uh, so we didn't quite know how that was going to, we knew it would affect the cash flow, but we didn't know whether it would affect the, the number of people that chose to, to renew. But the, uh, the other concern we had going into the year was if we would get, uh, what level of renewal we would get. Because in 2019, we had a little bit of a, a bit of a bumper year, a lot of new members, and we wondered if they would actually stay with us or maybe we're not so interested. So we, we kind of hedged our bets on what we expected. Uh, but at the end of the day, 89% of uh, our $5,700 came in from membership. 50-50 uh, draw. We had reduced opportunity in that, uh, but nevertheless, even though we could only do about, I think, two out of eight draws, we ended up with about 70% of the budget that we'd anticipated because people, people bought into it. Unfortunately, the only place we do 50-50 is at our club meetings, and in the absence of those meetings, we had no venue. Even though we had a meeting in September, we decided that it was not appropriate to reintroduce um, the passing out of tickets and the, the handing over of, of cash uh, in, under the current circumstances. So 50-50 is something that we really can't raise any money from in the near future. And the remaining 3%, um, the tiddly little bit, we, re we uh, raised from the sale of badges or uh, fluorescent stickers that people tend to put on their saddlebags or parts of their bike that aren't painted. Uh, if you like any badges with the club uh, name on, please see Mark Hill, our membership director. We've got quite a, a reserve of those. So that, uh, that was our receipts. So 89% from, from membership dollars, 8% from the 50-50 draw, and just a few sales of items. The expenses that we incurred this year, 48% uh, of what we spent, and we spent $5,687, 48% of that is uh, are the fixed costs around our website and membership management system. Now, I say fixed costs, a good portion of it's fixed. There is a little bit, a little bit of variability based on the headcount of members, but as our membership is going up, uh, those costs, I think it was about $6.25 per member per year is what we actually have to pay for every everybody that gets a, a login. But it is our virtual clubhouse, it's how we do our e-blasts to you, it's where the forums are and this year we also introduced the convenience factor of uh, online uh, membership sign up or renewal and all of the associated management costs there. 15% of what we spent was on the Ride Leader program for training and uh, first aid training and, or it was intended, uh, and extra basic training in how to, to uh, lead rides, how to prepare them, and how to take care of groups on rides, etc. Uh, we didn't need as much as, as we thought. 
for that because uh, more of our ride leaders stayed with us this year, so thank you for that. And we expected to be replenishing first aid kits. However, we had thankfully not had to deplete the, uh, the contents of first aid kits. I think the worst thing that happened this year was a couple of bruised egos. But uh, so, so we didn't have a lot of expense there and our first aid kits that are carried by all of the ride leaders, by the way, uh, remain current and fully stocked for the season ahead. The, we had 12% of expense on social events and volunteer, that included, of course, volunteer recognition and uh, new member orientation, um, but those fairly minimal. Affiliations, as I mentioned, for our $50 to uh, BMW Clubs Canada, we certainly get our value out of it. And we have, I think, I think a $35 cost to BMW Riders Association in the US. But again, that is really just a cost of doing business um, and being, being on the inside of what's going on in the BMW world and the rider world. Our administration, 6%, uh, half of that is our post office box. We don't get a lot of mail, we get about three letters a year, but we need to maintain it in order to uh, fulfill the obligations around our banking and, uh, and various other commitments. Uh, we just need to have an address. Club merchandise, we had a small 5% uh, expense on uh, the setup for that, uh, that online shop. However, that, that was more or less a one-time cost. We do have a little bit, if we choose to change the lineup of uh, items that are available for purchase, then we might have a few additional costs for, for setup. But by and large, uh, it is a self-financing program. Membership recruitment, uh, 5%. And that was uh, really on printing, uh, mostly. And I'll just remind you that we do have this uh, little card, little business card, sort of generic. The, the purpose of that, and we have a few hundred uh, of those still on, uh, on reserve, the purpose of that was that uh, every member can take a few of these and if you are out and about and you, you happen to meet people that might be interested to join the club, then uh, hand them out. It's a, a great recruitment tool. So Mark Hill manages that supply. If anybody would like to, to get, uh, get their hands on a few, let Mark know. Goodwill, we, <laughs> we doubled our, uh, our club contribution to charity this year from $100 to $200. So that was the last 3% of what we spent uh, was, was our goodwill contribution. So in the question and answer, if you do have questions that are around that, uh, we will do our best to answer those for you in a few moments. And uh, we have Tony Street, our treasurer, is online this evening from from the heart of Quebec, he tells me. And uh, so if it's a question that's outside of my pay scale, we will refer it to Tony for, for his assistance. Moving on to the second area of where the club has money, um, the is basically art school. And I'll tell you who's got what in a minute. But just to be clear, art school uh, is a, a club activity. It is a program running once a year, a single day at Calabogie Track. Uh, cornering skills for 50, up to 50 students and the cost of operating that is $15,000. Now it's absolutely self-financing and this year despite cancellation we I think we made about $30. I'm not sure how that happened but anyhow. Um, the, um, but well, the interesting thing with art school is that there is a lot of expense that has to be incurred prior to the revenues coming in. Uh, we normally, for example, if we take a decision to proceed in 2021 with art school, there will be an $1,800 deposit required uh, to uh, reserve the track. And that deposit goes in, I think, in November. And then there'll be additional payments uh, between now and the, uh, the May event that, uh, that take place. So we need to have money on hand for certain um, in order to just uh, help things flow through. And now I'm, I'm thinking you're saying to yourself, OK, so she got $13,000. Where is it? Well, here you go, this bottom line. So our assets, uh, we have in our general operating assets $6,942. And then in the art school um, uh, account, we have $6,194. And that is the, your total of $13,136.92. So that tells you where the money's divided, but where is the money actually at? It's all with the TD Bank. 
$2,900 in cash at the present time and $10,200 in GICs. And again, I would just like to put a shout out to our treasurer, uh, Tony Street. We are um, blessed to have his expertise because we, uh, the rest of the board don't ever have to concern what's happening. We know that uh, Tony keeps a very close eye on things. What little interest there is to be had, he is uh, ready to take advantage of. And he's also very careful to make sure that we have the cash flow we need, uh, specifically around those art school uh, early expenses. So that, you will be hopefully pleased to know, is everything that we have for you on the, um, the general club uh, situation and the financials and I believe I'm just looking to my colleagues here excuse me just chat amongst yourselves a minute um, if we are going to take a moment uh, for questions to come in we're going to take five minute break um, I know there's another election going on tonight but our election is going to matter to you it's going to change your year next year so be sure to stay online or come back five minutes from now if you have a question uh, please type it in and uh, I've already forgotten the address. There we go. AGM2020 at bmwmcottawa.ca. Send us your questions and we will be back in five minutes. Thank you very much.
And we are back. <laughs> uh, we don't have too many questions uh, coming in, but uh, one that might be more of a, a bit of information rather than a question. Uh, Michelle Dessoir reminded us to let you know that the BMW discount program also applies to cars uh, up to 2% uh, or $2,000. Um, I guess the lesser of, of those two evils, uh, reduction on the price of a car. So if you are in the market for one of those, that uh, is another benefit of membership of our club. And uh, we had uh, Bonnie St. Julian. Bonnie, glad to hear that you're, uh, you're fine. Um, Bonnie was off to get her foot sorted today. Uh, not too much information. I don't think it's too personal. It's a foot. Uh, but anyway, we're glad you're feeling great, Bonnie. And maybe your kind remarks were relating to the anaesthetic. We're not sure. Um, but anyway, Bonnie and uh, both Mark Hill have said uh, things are going fine. So we're glad to hear that our broadcast is, is working. And quite honestly, I have to put a huge shout out. I can't let you see our producer because he's busy. He's got six or seven screens going and a headset and whatever else right now. But Jeff Miller is the, the brains behind the, uh, the production this evening. So, well, without further ado, uh, we have no other questions, nobody's flailing away. No, I am going to pass the floor over to our Secretary, Denise Charlebois, uh, who is going to uh, tackle the election of officers for 2021. Bye. All right. Hello, everybody. Wow, what a marvelous year it's been. Thanks, Fiona, for your leadership and all the volunteers who put together these events. Um, I've had the privilege of uh, being part of the board for the last six months or so and have observed a great deal of talent on all fronts from that perspective. As your secretary, I made the call out for nominations by email using a special feature on the club's website, and this makes this task really easy since I don't have to write down and check that I haven't forgotten anybody's email or misspelled their address. Um, so nomination forms also submitted through the website were for exactly the number of positions to be filled and this means that no election has to take place. Aren't we all thrilled about that? <laughs> um, so the persons nominated all accepted the nominations and are appointed by a acclamation. I will state the position followed by their name. As President, Fiona Brown. Vice President, Chris White. As Treasurer, Tony Street. As Membership Director, Mark Hill. As Ride Captain, Jeff Miller. As Secretary, myself. As Members at Large, Larry Nesbitt and Brian Butler. Brian is interested in transitioning into the Ride Captain role. So uh, some of you might know that already. Um, and you'll probably see the photos of your board members, uh, board of directors on the website. So as soon as we have a chance to put that together, it will be uh, available. So you, all have a, you can all see our faces uh, associated with the names. So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, another, let's hope for another full year of uh, fun events and uh, that it will allow us to, to meet all these new members. <laughs> Good night. Okay. Well, I'm back. <laughs> For better or worse, um, I would just like to say thank you very much uh, for your confidence to, to let me uh, continue on for a further year. And I know I speak on behalf of all of the, the board members that are returning. Uh, we are very pleased to have the opportunity to continue to serve you. And especially uh, because of the challenges that we're currently facing, we, we really hope that we can put our expertise that we've gained over the past two years uh, to serve you to, to best advantage. And... Uh, We'll do our very best uh, to provide you with as many enjoyable motorcycling experiences as we possibly can in 2021. But uh, first, let's all enjoy what I still find hard to believe are going to be the next few days of fabulous weather. 
uh, with this very late Indian summer. And just to say thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Um, and thank you especially to our production team uh, here at Miller Studios. So with all of that said, to Denise, to Jeff, to all of you that have taken the time to join us, thank you very much and uh, stay safe and we'll talk again soon. Good night.